Okay, right, I'll give you a pre-thingy for this because I don't recommend that anybody listens to this video, watches it or has anything to do with it, basically. I'll give you what I'm saying here. Quantitative easing, <coughs> central banking, banking is all accounting. The castle now in coordination with other castles can say how the accounting can and should be done but it's a big decision because it's all accounting so changing accounting standards affects so many things that's it basically we've got tokens that oh god I really should start at the beginning Okay, I might drop the rest of this video, the, 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 the reading that's so boring. Um, we'll see how we go. Okay, something like, because this article in the Financial Times this morning is about the Fed, I'll talk dollars. A dollar is like a metre, a mile, an ounce, a litre. It's just a name for something. It's a standard something. You can't um, produce a dollar like you can't produce a litre. It's just the name for something. A denomination in this case. It's just a name for the denomination. And then you've got um, say a dollar note that is a token type um, a government bond is a token type um, an interest rate derivative contract is a token type <coughs> so you've got two things you've got the denomination the, the name for things you've got the tokens and then you can have a $1 bill, a $5 bill, the centime things and whatever. So you've got a quantity amount of these things, a quantity of a type of token with a certain designated name to it, like dollar or yen or pound. You can have a hundred dollar government bond, you can have a hundred dollar corporate bond, you can have a hundred dollar exchange rate de credit deri derivative contract. So you've got these things, you've got the denomination, the dollar thing, the yen thing, whatever it is, then you've got the different type of token that it is, a bank account comes with piece of paper it's your bank account details that's a different that's a token of your you can either say that the paper's the token or you think you've got tokens in the bank account that's a token uh, government bonds are tokens they're all different types of tokens and you've then got the quantity that is ascribed to those tokens three things very simple one two three got them all got them all the denomination, the token, and the amount. Right. So that was the precursor. And how to take, how to account for all this is history. It's you know, tradition. It gets changed, etc. And then when it comes to banking and these type tokens, the central bank is often um, a main driver in how they should be accounted for because they see themselves as being in charge because they're in the castle and the banks are outside and it's the castle that's always in charge. So the castle's in charge of the way the banks do their accounting. Right, I'll read you some stuff now and I would recommend that most everyone just goes away. This is um, an old Fed member talking about what happened in the Fed at this time, um, which 
which was a few years ago. As the Fed expanded its holdings of mortgage-backed securities under QE3, the projected sales became substantial. Now, I'm not going to explain any of this because you wouldn't understand it. You wouldn't understand it. And you'll just lose the will to live and that'll just be the end of it. And so that's cruelty. The problem was that the Fed expected to be selling its MBS mortgage-backed securities when interest rates were higher than when it bought them, which would generate capital losses in some periods, especially under scenarios where interest rates rose sharply, those losses would surpass the net interest income the Fed was expecting to make. In other words, the Fed's net income was projected to be negative. Now, yesterday, or earlier today, the last video, I explained the castle and you've got just different rooms in the castle and they interact with their bookkeeping but they're in charge of everything and always kind of bear in mind something along the lines of if there was a war and the castle was really coming under pressure from the outside they would just change all the rules and make sure what was needed was done but if there's not a war on there's different parties saying, no, no, we always do the accounting this way. And no, you've got to take it up to room three. Then it's got to go to room B6 up in the West Wing. And then it's got to come back. It can all be changed whenever. But if there's not real screw down to do it, people's inertia will want it done the same way. In the castle. Uh, right, I'm scrolling down here. I've marked them where I'm going to read. As it turned out, purchase, purchases ultimately lasted until the end of October 2014. That was 15 months later than originally projected by the staff. In total, the Fed bought $1.75 trillion in mortgage bonds and treasury debt. Okay, so we've got mortgage bonds, that's a type of token, and treasury debt, that's government bonds, that's a different, another type of token. They're in dollars, 1.75 trillion. That's the amount of dollar. That's the de denomination type. Uh, more than double the amount originally projected. The Fed is continuing to assess and debate its monetary policy framework. It is worth keeping in mind that the Fed didn't make an explicit decision to keep its balance sheet so large for so long because doing so would support efficient monetary policy. This is blah blah, it's awful. <coughs> Instead the, fel the Fed fell into its current situation because the original plan to drain excess reserves and sell assets became untenable once people realised selling such a large portfolio so quickly would generate large losses. <coughs> right now I'm not going to explain much of that just to say which if you've been keeping if you're still here you obviously understand that the big bankers big book of the banks accounts the banks accounts with the big banker are called the reserves and here we uh, get, get the, the the original plan to drain excess reserves those the huge quantities are now on the books of the banks that they can't do anything with but, well, should I go now? Yeah, okay. But, um, have we done I, O, E, R here? Uh, no, we haven't come to it yet. That's in comments down below. Interest on excess reserves. The central banker in the castle said to the banks who are outside, we'll pay you some interest on the excess reserves that you've got with us. That's the amount that they've got um, you will have noticed from the last video which is now very big numbers because they've been buying from the outside world so it's the bank's books with the central banker that's got huge numbers in it and they said at the start of the crisis they were going to pay them a little bit of interest each time um, it's all accounting whether this makes for um, profits or losses but you can see it's at least something that the banks get and it's going in all the time because their excess reserves are huge and technically and this is where I talk about the uh, the castle could in wartime do what they wanted 
but this is normal and they have to do normal accounting so the the fed is dripping these reserves into the banks big books banks that's plural big book if you like singular for all the banks now you can ask well where does the fed get the reserves from to give to the big banks obviously they don't get them from anywhere they just write them in but they have to account for them in another in the east wing room six and you can imagine this is what I'm saying it's all accounting everyone's got to get their accounting to balance and look right according to the standards that are the norm for the day right going down into comments now I wanted to read that last I can't remember why um, because the loss could approach um, a third of a trillion yes mark to market accounting could be a cruel thing because that's not Trump Trump change oh dear chump change a third of a trillion so um, we're talking big numbers technically on the books of the the, the central banker in the east wing wasn't it room six and it's technically because this is another type of token you could say reserves are a type of token or yeah let's let's say these are reserves they're, they're, they're an accounting loss in a token called reserves they're denominated in dollars and this chump change is uh, a third of a trillion of them 300 billion dollars worth of these reserves which don't exist at all but it's a huge accounting loss and if the central bank want the banks out there who are notoriously naughty to be good it's kind of they're showing a good example by trying to show that they keep their books in good order so the banks out there should keep theirs in good order so the central bank can't dick around or don't want to dick around too much they want to show a good uh, a good face to the world right let's uh, what did this last what comment I wanted to look up the only solution I can see this is a commenter but you know it's it's, it's sensible stuff the only solution I see to massively expand the reserve requirements okay you, you, reserve requirement you know they used to be small and the banks used to keep them small and that was the way to uh, it's very it's strangely complicated that how to affect the interest rate but that's how they used to do it and when the banks on the big bankers bankers book for the banks only had very small reserves the central bank could then manipulate the banks out there but now they've got monstrously huge amounts of reserves and that old leverage thing that leverage in the way of being able to maneuver uh, it was a, a link you know you pull this back and you were directly connected to the banks and you could do things in the push and pull of things obviously that you can't do anymore so he's saying well you could massively expand that number you know it used to be the equivalent of 60 billion or something make it 400 billion as the minimum that you can have it's 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 this is just arguing about accounting but this is what this video is about to say it's all just accounting massively expand the reserve requirement and drop the IOER drop the interest on excess reserves just the central bank says well that was just for the that was just for the emergency now we're not going to keep tripping you more reserves they can do it but they've got to stand up and do it and tell people why they're doing it which is always tricky and embarrassing um, it's doable but all these things have accounting knock-on effects but that risks ru uh, ruining the weaker banks you know you can't expect a, a small bank to have huge reserves and not have any interest on those reserves in a way of saying it they couldn't afford it the smaller banks would be 
smashed, as they have to fund that free capital themselves, don't worry about that. Cue credit crunch as they all stop lending, because that's incredibly complicated as well. But the reasoning why that's, they have a credit crunch because they stop lending, it's all accounting, you know. So, have I said it's all accounting? enough times now in 15 minutes that you see that all these things, the denomination, the different types of token and their uh, you know, obviously there are more of different types but there are thousands of different types of tokens, you know, there are say a dozen really very important ones, but it, then it just goes out to hundreds and then thousands of different types of tokens and then you get a number which is attached onto the token in the denomination, but it's all these tokens, and they've all got to be accounted for in a certain way, and it is kind of the central bank, the, the castle that says how the accounting should be done, so the castle don't want to be seen dicking too much with accounting, or they will be hoist on their own petard. So if you've got this far, bloody well done. Bye.